Absolutely. So, well, John chapter 8. That's where we're at today, guys. Let's get into it. John chapter 8. I was prepping this up this morning. Um, starting with verse 12, by the way, in your notes. You know, we're in the, the, the epiphany season of the church here. Uh, goes up until Ash Wednesday, um, so we got a few weeks to go. Uh, isn't that something? We're already talking Lent. <laughs> Always crazy um, how fast time goes. But uh, remember, what, what does the word epiphany mean? Epiphany? Showing forth. Showing forth, yeah, revealing, manifesting, so... I always uh, enjoy the gospel readings this time in the church here. You know, Jesus shows forth, manifests, makes known that, that he is God's son, right? That, that, he, is, uh, that he is the promised Savior. Um, you know, the readings might, might, might have the miracles that Jesus performed, right? Uh, like, you know, changing the water into wine or, you know, whatever else, you know, many other miracles that he performed. Another way that that Jesus manifests that, that he's God's son is the way he preached God's word, right? And, you know, right now we're having gospel readings from the Sermon on the Mount. You know, some say it's the most famous sermon anywhere in the Bible. You know, and when, when Jesus preached, wow, it, it hit hard, right? When, when Jesus preached, built faith and, and gave faith gave life. And it seems to me this morning what's before us is it's kind of a sermon. And there's some interaction <laughs> with his Pharisees. So we'll call this an interactive sermon in John 8. But um, it, it is life-giving. It, it is hard-hitting. It is, it is faith-building. Also, as I prepped this up today, I, I, it made me think of some advice a pastor years ago had given me. Sometimes when we read the Bible, you know, we you know, we, we, what, what does this mean? You know, we might read a verse or a passage and, uh, you know, I'm not sure I quite get this. And a wise pastor said he would tell people when you, you're kind of, you're stumped a little bit, he would say, just keep reading. Just, just keep going. And oftentimes in the context, you know, Scripture will kind of explain Scripture and help you understand. So there might be a few phrases in words of Jesus this morning, what is he? Well, we're going to just read the sermon and, and understand it, God willing. Okay, so here we go. John chapter 8, 12 to Thursday, Jesus uh, is testifying, uh, preaching about himself. Let's just start with verse 12. We can chew on that for a little bit, I think. Jesus spoke again to the people. I am the light of the world. John 8, verse 12. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So right off the bat, this hard-hitting, faith-building, life-giving sermon, we have, uh, we call them Jesus uh, I am statements. And it got me thinking this morning, there are a number of I am statements. I think there are at least seven. Hope I'm not missing any. Uh, what might be fun to investigate further, I ran out of time this morning. I, I think most, maybe all of them, are found in John's Gospel. But remember, the what are the I am Statements, because we got one already. I am the light of the world. We'll come back to that in a moment. Jesus, I, I am statements. The vine. Ah, Naomi, I am the vine. Yeah, you are the branches. That, that's in John, fifteen. Yeah. I am the bread. Okay, I am, yeah. I am the bread. I think that's in John. John 6. Yeah, yeah right around the, uh, the, the feeding of the 5,000. I am the bread of life. Living water. 
I don't, th I don't think he said, I am the living water. He gives. Yeah, yeah you're close. Yeah, so we're going to say that's not quite an I am, but he he does give living water, absolutely. Uh, I am don't, the gate for the sheep. Yeah, I am the gate. There you go. I think that's like John 10. The shepherd. Good shepherd. Yeah, 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 yeah. <coughs> yeah, the shepherd. Good shepherd, let's see. I lay down my, my life for the sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. A couple more. What do you got? Is it one? I, I'm the way. The yeah, we're going to, yeah, life. yeah. I'm going to lump those all okay. together. Thank you. I am the way, the truth. And the life. That's John chapter 14. I think these all are from John. I think it's a resurrection. Ah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. I know we're going to couple that with six. Yeah. I am the resurrection. <laughs> That's some um, John. John chapter 11, uh, in connection with um, uh, uh, Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. I am the, the resurrection. I am from above is in chapter 23. Um, or verse 23. Yeah, no. That John 11 on resurrection, that, that, that's um, every three years. Uh, what Sunday? I think it's the fifth Sunday in Lent. Uh, we have a, a reading from John 11. <coughs> Um, Jesus uh, comforting Mary and Martha and raising Lazarus. I am the resurrection and the life. And uh, did any of you ever know of Professor John Jeske from the seminary? Yeah. Okay, maybe, yeah. Just a tremendous um, professor. Was and he was uh, the son of uh, the Mark Jeske, the Time of Grace wow. guy. Okay. Yeah, so John was his father. And... Uh, I love the story about him real quick. Uh, his sister uh, lived in Clearwater, Florida, and she went to a Missouri Synod church down there. And so every every few years, Professor Jeske would come and visit his sister, and when he would, he would uh, visit my church on Sunday morning and give me cardiac arrest. Because <laughs> he was a, a, you know, a SEM professor, and he was an amazing preacher, right? And so... You know, a preacher's worst nightmare is your professor showing up. <laughs> and one Sunday when he showed up, I, 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 it was the fifth Sunday in Lent, and I was preaching on John 11, you know, the raising of Lazarus. And um, I thought, great. This is probably the worst sermon ever written on John chapter 11. And my professor is going to hear that. But uh, uh, he said it wasn't too bad. Uh, <laughs> they gave you a beat. I guess they gave me a beat. Yeah. So, but but little Lu but Lucille Teske appreciated it. Yeah, Lucille was from Texas, uh, from Canada. She was maybe four foot something, and her husband Leo had died a, a few months before, and we had the funeral for him, um, and. Uh, in Florida, the church there, the, the tradition was the pastor would usher people out, you know, row by row instead of the ushers. And I, I ushered, you know, Lucille out, and she just gave me a big, 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 big hug, you know. And I, I must have applied, you know, the, that sermon, how just as Jesus raised Lazarus, right, he's going to raise our loved ones, and we'll be reunited. So, so... Professor thought it was an okay sermon, but Lucille loved it. <laughs> so I am the resurrection and the life. There they are, right, Jesus? I, I am statements. Now, let's focus on uh, the one before us today. I am the light of the world. Um, whoever follows me uh, will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. That's a memory treasure, John 8, verse 12. Um, what does Jesus all mean by that? I mean, there is a lot. Um, 
in those words of Jesus. What's it mean that, I mean, he's not, not, not really a light. Jeff? Well, it's like when you walk in a dark room and you turn the light on and you can see. Okay, yeah. We can see, you know, light, light, um, it, it shows the way, you know, and um, I guess he, you know, he, he shows the way to heaven, right? He's like, he says, I, I am the way. Right. Great, Jeff. Well, Wait. In one of the last Wells Connection with our 100 missions outreach at, down in Atlanta, the one down there, the lady who was speaking said, now I see everything completely different in life. Remember that on that video? Thank you. Yeah, what was her name again? Um, well, thanks for putting a plug in for the whole missions and 100 missions in 10 years. And yeah, the lady who was reached from an in-town uh, Lutheran church in downtown Atlanta. Now I can see clearly. I, in fact, I wrote down in my notes here, it made me think of the third article of the Creed, right? Where um, he's called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, right? Um, so if you follow me, you will not walk in darkness, but you will have the light of life, right? So, uh, you know, Jesus, like he turns the light on. And, and now, now we see the gifts and the blessings that God gives to us, like the forgiveness for all of our sins, right? Um, you know, the, the joy that we have in the Lord, uh, the, the living hope that we have for a, a life to come and a resurrection of our bodies, um, you know, the, the, the blessing of peace, uh, that we're reconciled to God. Right? So we, you know, we look at things in a, in a different way. I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you're not in the dark. What else is meant by this? I am the light of the world. What is the darkness uh, that is in our lives in the world? I mean, not, not just a physical darkness, you know, every night we got so many hours of dark, but... Sin. Okay, so darkness of sin. What else? The darkness of thinking that I have to be perfect and please God, whereas Jesus okay. has my perfection. Right. Maybe the other side of that coin would be, you know, unbelief, you know, trusting in oneself and not in the one Savior uh, and what He's done for us. So, yeah, so that there's darkness in our world, sin, and 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 unbelief, and of course. Forgiveness. Okay, that's the light. Yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about darkness yet. Sin, death, and the yeah. How about the darkness of death? Right, the, the physical death, and you know, the wages of our sin is death. Um, they'll all die, the common death of mankind. Uh, the, maybe the, you know, being doomed and deserving of eternal death. Um, so that is the darkness, and in the midst of it, Jesus, you know, it, it is light. You know, and, and maybe in contrast to, to those, you know, you know, in Jesus we have hope, right? I mean, we're, we're encouraged, you know, when, uh, when you're a kid and, and, and you're scared of the dark and, and, and the light goes on, you know, you feel better, right? You're encouraged. Uh, so Christ encourages us, and we have hope. Sure. Another connection when I read this is he is the light that he created the light. You go back to Genesis 1, the oh. first thing that was created. Yeah. And I always find that that was one of the first things because the earth was void and dark. And from there on, he is That's right. the light because he made it. Light shatter the darkness. Let there be light. You know, and then, yeah, that's a great comment. Then you think of a uh, we had a, a few weeks ago in the reading from Isaiah, the people living in the land of darkness, light has dawned, right? That Jesus came and 
brought the light of God's love and, and Jeff forgiveness and you know eternal life and, and, and hope and, and many, many other blessings. So I am the light of the world. Follow me. Have the light of life. Okay. One verse down and like 20 or so more to go. Let's pick up the base here. Um, Jesus, uh, his sermon, uh, interactive sermon. And of course, that one verse was pretty easy to one package. And, and we'll read on now. And, and um, um, as you'll see, uh, part of his audience, you know, were these, uh, the, the, these, uh, these Pharisees who were uh, you know, very difficult, how they interacted with Christ. So he's speaking especially to them. Uh, let, let, let's uh, get this broken up in, in chunks. Let, let's look at 13, I think, to 18. 13 to 18. Let's have someone read the next little section. Wayne, you want to do it for us? So the Pharisees said to him, You testify about yourself. Your testimony is not valid. Even if I testify about myself, Jesus replied, my testimony is valid because I know where I came from and where I am going. But you do not know where I came from or where I am going. You judge according to the flesh. I am not judging anyone. But even if I were to judge, my judgment would be true because I am not alone, but I am with the Father who sent me. Even in your law it is written that the testimony of two people is valid. I am one who testifies about myself. And the Father who sent me testifies about me. Yeah, thank you, Wayne. And to that last verse, there is a a little note top of your uh, top of your sheet there. The, the look, uh, just kind of an FYI, Deuteronomy chapter nineteen, um, you know, the laws of, of Mona, Moses, and you know this testimony of two. Um, and even Moses said, one witness is not enough to convict a man accused of any crime or offense he may have committed. A matter must be established by the testimony of, of two or three witnesses. And Jesus had uh, the testimony and support uh, of his father. I'm, I'm not alone. All right, let's look at uh, question number two as we hear Jesus um. Uh, testifying uh, on his own behalf and that of the Father. He says that a couple times. Um, my testimony is valid. Verse 14 and, and later in verse 18. Uh, I testify for myself um, and my other witnesses, the Father. So uh, you're, you're asked, can we find an answer for why could Jesus testify on his own behalf? Why could he proclaim on his own? Don't think. He is true and he is speaking truth. Okay, I mean, and it's true because he's God, right? He is God. Um, so he can testify and proclaim. Uh, he is not merely a man. And, and how do we know for sure that? That Jesus is God. Catechism 101. Well, he claimed his miracles. Okay, there you go. That's a big one, right? Uh, the miracles uh, that he performed. It was the fulfillment of all the Old Testament prophecies. Okay, fulfilled, yeah, all the prophecies, you know, uh, including. Uh, like some of the names, Emmanuel, right? God with us. And at John the Baptist baptized him, the father said, This is my son. And oh, okay, son. yeah, yeah. How do we know? I mean, the, the, the God the Father um, testified, This is my son. He is, he is God. Look at the end part of verse 14. Maybe we can add that as well. You know, why, why could Jesus testify on his own? I mean, he, he is God. He, he was proclaimed to be God. His miracles prove that he is God. The end of verse 14. Actually, maybe the middle of verse 14. 
Yeah. Know where I came from. And where did he come from? Heaven. <laughs> yeah. He came from heaven. Uh, he came from the Father's side. And was there, you know, in eternity. Um, that's where he was going to go, right? Uh, would eventually ascend and go back. Um, so maybe that's again, more uh, ammunition that I, I can testify, I can proclaim, I can preach on my own. Who I am, where I've come from, where, where I'm going. Then the other half, uh, number two, another question. It says, why does Jesus not need to testify on his own behalf? I these were kind of challenging questions. But because his father. All right, Wayne. Thank you. I was, that's jumped down because of the father um, and his support. Um, you know, verse 16, I, I stand with the father. You know, we're, we're in cahoots. We're, we're on the same page. Uh, he, he sent me. You know, he's got my back. Uh, I, I am on, uh, on his mission. Calls him his witness. You see that in verse 18? My other witness is the Father who sent me. Can you... Uh, I know someone mentioned it before, but can you think of some times when, when the father uh, witnessed? I think, I think someone said it before. Baptism and transfiguration. Yeah, baptism and the transfiguration. Yeah, the kind of the bookends of, of Jesus' ministry, right? The baptism was the beginning. We had that a couple weeks ago, um, Jesus' baptism. Uh, is it Matthew chapter 3? That's Matthew's account. Matthew 3, verse, if you want to jot down verse 17, Matthew 3, verse 17. This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. I was the father well pleased with Jesus. I'm not sure if Vicar brought that out in his sermon that day. Doesn't follow all the advice I give him. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell him, you know, you're from half, half for now. You're you got your own church. You better know what you're doing by now. So <laughs> I, 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 uh, I extend the leash after Christmas with the Vicar. You know, I, but I don't think he brought that out. Well, that's all right. You can't say everything in every sermon, right? I tell him, leave something for the next sermon too, right? <laughs> I was the father well pleased with Jesus. Because Jesus does everything he likes perfectly. Yeah, and especially the, the, the work of, of, of saving people from sin and death and hell. And uh, he was well on his way to accomplishing that mission. And then the father knew it, and he proclaimed it. Right, The testimony of the father. Jesus has got it. Right? I am well pleased with you. And, and then uh, the transfiguration, if you want to jot down, that's Matthew chapter uh, uh, chapter 17. In fact, maybe even, don't you, uh, I'll let me maybe turn there as we consider the testimony of the Father. And, and now we're at the end of, of Jesus' ministry. Um, probably a few months or so before Holy Week. Matthew 17. That's uh, Peter, James, and John, right, going up the mountain. And there Jesus was transfigured, and um, you know, Moses and Elijah appeared. Um, yeah, like verse 5, the bright cloud enveloped them. 
How was that translated in the EHV? Wait, I know you've got I that. I don't have it right here. No, no, okay, anyone got it? Verse Helms, five? Helms. Yeah, while he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. Okay. Just then a voice came out of the cloud and said, this is my son whom I love. For okay. With him I am very pleased. Yeah, so there's a testimony. Uh, very similar to the baptism. This is my son uh, whom I love. With him I'm well pleased. And then some good advice. Would you agree? Yes. Listen to him. Yeah. <laughs> That's always good advice. Listen to the words and promises of Jesus. Oh, absolutely. Right? Um, listen to him. Uh, what he says about our salvation, our, our justification, also our, also our sanctification. That's what we're doing you know, now on Sunday mornings with uh, the Sermon on the Mount. Um, you know, as Vicar said, uh, he preached on the Beatitudes last week. Um, and the audience uh, were believers, his followers. Um, so it's, it's really a sermon not so much about forgiveness and salvation. They, they, they knew the way. Uh, so they got encouragement for their Christian living. And so this week we're going to hear him say, you know, be salt. You are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. Um, so we're encouraged to be who we are. Listen to him. This is my son. The, uh, the bright, bright cloud what? Well, yeah, it, it overshadowed them, I think. Okay. Yeah. The NIV is enveloped them. You can imagine what that must have been like. The cloud enveloping them. Every time I read that, though, I have to pause and make sure I don't say it the way I said it at my vicar here. Yeah, the cloud um, envelope <laughs> envelope them. <laughs> I heard about that one. Uh, where I vicared, I was single at the time, wasn't married yet, and so the my bishop, my supervising pastor, said, wife, wife had mercy on me and invited me to the parsonage every Sunday after church for, uh, for, for the meal. And my bishop was a real meat and potatoes kind of guy. So, I mean, her, her Sunday meal was, wow, not that... Um, and that tied me over till Wednesday night <laughs> uh, when uh, the older couple, uh, Milton and Helen Hiskey, I, they were landlords for uh, the house that I lived in in town. They owned a little house in town. And that's where St. Paul's Vicar stayed. And uh, she would have me out for supper on Wednesday night before I had evening catechism class, right? And I would highly offend her if I didn't take seconds on everything. So, even learned to eat mincemeat pie. I didn't really care for her, but I couldn't offend <laughs> Helen, so I washed it down with lots of milk. And you should not be slender. Yeah, yeah. But, <clears throat> so in between those two meals, uh, my diet was simple, uh, spaghetti and pancakes. So to this day, I cannot stand pancakes. <laughs> But yeah, thicker, it's not en enveloped, it's enveloped. Okay. That was the same day we had communion with the old TLH hymnal. Remember that? With all the angels and uh, ark angels. But I said ark angles. <laughs> that was a bad day for being a thicker. Thicker, it's not ark angles. <laughs> I didn't exactly shed tears when that old hymnal went away. <laughs> but the testimony of the Father, right? That's what we're focusing on. And, uh, and, and Jesus had it. Okay? So, did not need to just testify by himself. Though that should be sufficient, I also have the Father's uh, testimony and his words about me. No, Pastor, when you think of, you know, these Philistines trying to debate with Jesus, I mean, in high school, a debating team, 
you know, uh, levels. I mean, what, if you knew the opponent's thought process okay. even before you, you know, you, yep. it, it yep. was an unfair advantage. Jesus knew what they were thinking right yeah. before they even said it. So. Yeah, and, it, and even the compassion and love because he knew that with their warped thinking they were on a path to hell, right? And he's still trying to get them on board, right? Come on, you know, you, you respect and love the Father, right? He's testifying about me. Um, but yeah, he knew his opponent, these Pharisees. Um, when they had all the historical Bible uh, verses like Isaiah that told about Christ and his yeah. coming, I mean, they ignored all of that. Yeah, you know, the, the blindness of unbelief. Yes. Yeah, you got that, I know. Margaret, going to add? Well, this is off a different tack. If the Pharisees were the leaders of these people and the teachers, were they? Yeah, they were. All right. In one of St. Paul's epistles, he talks about the new preacher being a bishop and, and responsible for the souls that they lead astray. Hell for the Pharisees is going to be really dreadful. Yeah. That, that reminded me of, you know, like kind of Ezekiel, you know, the watchman on the tower, right? And if, you know, he doesn't do his job, um, you know, and, and um, some perish, you know, that, that's on him, right? So, yeah, to whom much is given, much is expected, right? So, but the Lord's trying to win them back here, isn't he? You know, and very end of the section, you know, we see some some put their faith in him. Many, in fact, did. Um, even some Pharisees, um, who's probably the most famous Pharisee who was converted. Nicodemus. Nicodemus. Yes. Yeah, that's in John's Gospel too, chapter three. Right. Um, so there was hope. Okay. Next. Uh, Next section. Again, we're going through Jesus' interactive sermon and what are some of the main points. Uh, not every phrase may be easy to digest and understand, but um, let's see the big picture and the main truths here. So 19 to 26. So we're kind of picking up and he had just uh, you know, referred to the Father. Anyone care to read, Bob? Thank you, Bob. Then they asked him, Where is your father? You do not know me or my father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would know my father also. He spoke these words while teaching in the temple area near the place where the offerings were put. Yet no one seized him because his time had not yet come. Once more Jesus said to them, I am going away and you will look for me and you will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. This made the Jews ask, will he kill himself? Is, this what, is that what he says? Where I go, you cannot come? But he continued, you are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins. If you do not believe that I am the one I claim to be, you will indeed die in your sins. Who are you, they asked. Just what I have been claiming all along, Jesus replied, I have much to say in judgment of you, but he who sent me is reliable, and what I have heard from him, I tell the world. It's kind of, kind of a tough sermon, isn't it? <laughs> um, uh, how do you really feel, Jesus, right? Um, you know, p part of good preaching uh, is is also proclaiming the law, right? Um, you know, one of the Bible's main teachings, um, the law. Is, and and where, where were there some law words and, and phrases here? So uh, some crushing words of Jesus to lead them to repent. Do you see any law? In your sin. Yeah, verse twenty-one. You're gonna die in your sin. Uh, that's you know where I go. I 
think, is he not referring to heaven? Eternal life? You know, right now, you can't come? Uh, that's, that, that's law. That, that's the hammer uh, meant to crush them. Um, and how can we get forgiveness? How, how can we go there? That's, you know, what, what the response Christ was hoping for. And again, the last verse, some did respond that way. Sadly, some didn't. A any more hard, hard law? You're from below. Yeah, you're from below. F from, from this world. This world that's going to pass away and, and be destroyed. You'll die in your sins. Yeah, Lois. You're going to die in your sins. It's not saying there wasn't hope for them always hope if there's repentance but guys the, the path you're on is destruction but as we'll see a bit later in the sermon like verse 27 there, there's gospel and, and a reference to his death so we'll get there in a moment um, number three number three Getting speaking to the Pharisees, uh, Margaret, these are the religious leaders, mentioned that before. Um, and maybe we've answered some of this already, but at number three says, why were uh, these religious leaders incompetent to judge Jesus and, you know, to provide light for the people, right? He, he came uh, to give light. Uh, why, why couldn't they? Why couldn't they follow Jesus uh, to where he was going? Again, I think we a little bit are answering that, but, but more thoughts. Margaret? Just like in Luther's day, the teachers were following traditions above the prophecies that had been made. Okay. Yep. So the Pharisees, um, you know, the, the traditions may be handed down from Moses. Um, <laughs> And also, uh, you know, the laws of Moses and emphasizing them um, and not seeing that Christ had come to fulfill the law and bring life and salvation. Yep, that's correct. Other thoughts? They just weren't qualified to okay. judge. Yeah, and especially in, in, in their state of unbelief. Right, and in their state of, of being spiritually blind, right? I mean, they, they, they were not enlightened, you know, by the Holy Spirit. Um, um, and their eyes weren't open to see clearly the love of God and, and the blessings that God gives in Christ. Um, so, yeah, they were not qualified, Bob, because of their unbelief, hardness of their hearts. <laughs> Well, it reminds me, I watch a lot of nature shows, but I always watch them muted because otherwise I'm going to get evolution. And when I do turn it on, I hear that they have adapted, they have done this, they have that they're designed to do this, and they can't put their finger on the final touch, which is after millions and billions, then finally it happened this way. And they did it again which they said, now it all comes down to the molecules were there and how it could assemble. And I immediately asked them what I asked at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago when I was there. They took it all the way down to the spark that set off the dust, and I asked the screen, where did the spark come from? And there's blank, zero talk. These people are the same way. You're in darkness, you have it coming from the wrong angle, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't realize you don't know what you're talking about. And you're just rolling around in the mud. Okay. Do you know the real Big Bang Theory? And uh, not the theory, the truth. God spoke the word and bang, it happened. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> so we do believe in the Big Bang. All right. <laughs> Let there be light. And, yeah, that's... That's the next translation coming out. God said, let there be light. And bang! <laughs> Good one, Naomi. All right, last couple of verses of this 
this interactive sermon. <laughs> and I think here, uh, uh, here are some gospel in it. Um, 27 to 30. Someone please, anyone? Margaret, you, you can have it. They did not understand that he was telling them about his father. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am the one I claim to be, and that I do nothing on my own but speak just what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. Even as he spoke, many put their faith in him. All right. Thank you, Marcus. So again, there's that, that blindness, that unbelief. Uh, they did not understand. Um, you know, and, and we, you know, there but by the grace of God, right, go you and I. Um, you know, when we had Mission Festival last week in West Salem, they, they sang that classic Mission Festival hymn, right? You can't have a Mission Festival and not sing what hymn? Oh, come on. <laughs> Hark the voice of, you know, you know. You know, while the multitudes are dying. It's, remember that phrase? While the multitudes are dying, right? And, you know, do we not have to say there but by the grace of God go you and I? That we are not among the multitudes who are dying and are just in the dark um, and, and don't get it. It's just, it's the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, but, did you see some gospel at the end of the sermon here? I think there is some. You know, your, I think your notes talk about, I mean, they, they're starting to plot his death. It's that time in Jesus' ministry. They want to take this guy out. So I don't know exactly how, we're probably, you know, halfway through his ministry a bit more. Um, Where do we see a gospel reference? When you lift up the Son of Man, okay. you know that I am the one. Yeah, right. Thank you, Wayne. Verse 28. That, that's Jesus, I think, being lifted up on the cross. You know, and you're plotting to do this, but God's going to use it as part of the plan of salvation. Right? You think you're murdering me, but this is the way I'm going to save, save the world. When I'm, I'm lifted up. And, and you will know that I am the one I claim to be. Um, that made me think of uh, uh, on Good Friday after Jesus died. Remember the centurion? Surely. Margaret, this surely was this was the Son of God, right? It had gotten dark, and remember it says that the, 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 the temple curtain, you know, ripped, in, you know. Um, and the saints came forth from the grave. Yeah, some... Now, people came out of the grave even, and surely this was the Son of God. Now, you know, did he say that in, in faith? I don't know, but, but he acknowledged, right, this is the Son of God, right? Um, and, and ultimately, everyone's going to acknowledge that, right? Right? You know, is it in Philippians? Every knee will bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Um, not all will do that in saving faith, right? But everyone will acknowledge, you know, you are the Christ, the Son of God. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, number four, even as the, the religious leaders were plotting to kill Jesus, right? You know, when you lift me up, uh, what were Jesus' words doing? in the hearts of many who heard him, way at the end. Praise God. And bringing them to faith. Yeah. There you go, Myron, right? So, so many were being brought to faith. Um, and hopefully even some of these Pharisees. But the gospel was God's power to save. Indeed. Okay, applying this. Let's kind of wrap it up. Last couple of questions. Um, 
Let's wrestle with number five. Uh, without Jesus, people live, uh, it says, in the darkness of, of sin. Right? So the old, uh, you know, no Jesus, no peace. No Jesus, no peace. Right? <clears throat> so K-N-O-W, you know Jesus. You, you K-N-O-W, peace. You, you don't know Jesus. And, oh, wait. Yeah, no Jesus. Okay. No Jesus, K N O W, you know peace, K N O W, um, you you don't know Jesus, K N O W, then there's no, no peace, no. N O. Did I get that right? No. No. No, Did I get, <laughs> no Jesus. N O Jesus. N O Jesus. Oh. Oh. No peace, N O peace. Okay, I did get it wrong. So you know Jesus, K N O W, then you know peace. If there's no Jesus and all, thank you, then there's no peace. Right? So now that, again, those without Jesus, there's no peace. They're, they're in the dark. And how would, how would that affect, it says, how we evaluate people? That was a tough question, I thought. But let me well, throw it out there. you should be surprised when they do what they do because oh. they're... Okay. They, they don't know anything. All right. So we. And they don't want to know any better. We, we, we shouldn't be surprised by any opposition to the message of the gospel, right? I mean, it's more of a shock when people believe it. No, right? That's more of a miracle. It takes a miracle to believe it. Um, but all by nature are opposed mm -hmm. to it. So we're not surprised by opposition. Pastor. But this is truly blindness, because here is a religion that teaches heaven is for everyone. God has made the way for everyone to get there. Simply believe it. You don't have to work. You don't have to do. It is yours now. Just believe it. Yeah. What can you lose? And they don't believe it. So easy, and yet so hard. So and then, why attack someone who says, we're giving you this free? Yeah. You just Pride. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Romans 8, verse 7, the sinful mind is enmity against the Lord, right? There's just a hostility by nature. I don't know how many know this, but on the Wells News, it reported that in one of our churches in Colorado, some person came and threw a Molotov cocktail into the building, but it didn't burn very much, so they were able to put it out. But they were able to get the person because they simply tracked him in the snow and went right to his own house. So even one way you think, how mindless, stupid is this ignorant person? But then you have to feel sorry because he is that mindless, yeah. stupid, and ignorant. Yeah. And probably very unhappy. Yeah. I heard in the news that there was a township or an area of Minnesota that wanted to ban Bible school. For kids, you yeah. know, and, and that's something. It's got to be yeah. blind to think, you know, that yeah. just by passing a law or an ordinance, that's going to stop those kids from yeah. reading the Bible. You know, can't chain up the gospel, right? But yeah, I mean, living in the dark. You know, and I think another way we can apply this maybe is not being surprised when, you know, maybe people's motives aren't God pleasing. If if if, if if, if they don't have faith, how could, you know, I, I think, for example, um, what's no doubt one reason some people will send their kids to vacation Bible school in the summer? Get rid of them. Get rid of them for three hours. <laughs> Free babysitting. You know, I'm going to dump them off at this church. You know, and, and maybe that's their motive, you know. Is that a God-pleasing motive? No, but, you know, if, if you know, they're... Not believers, right? They're, they're in the dark yet, you know, but we have a chance hopefully to, to reach the kids and maybe the parents as well. Or at, at Key to Life, um, you know, we, we always have some staff who are, are not, not, not wells and, and maybe not even Lutherans, so we want to, of course, get God's word to them for their spiritual well-being and because, I mean, they're with the kids every day, you know, and, and teaching. And so we want so we want to get them to a Bible information class. You know, my life's big questions. Twelve weeks, you know, hour at a pot. And these these ladies, they work uh, 
You know, they're, they're, that's a physically demanding job. You know, I mean, the kids don't sleep for eight hours. Right? You know, you're caring for them, and so how do we get these teachers after a long day? They want you to come to the Bible information class, so we are thinking about a $300 incentive for them. That mm. you come to this, and you will get probably a script card from Northland for $300. Now we appreciate your time after a long day, and that you will do this. So, so their motivation might be, I want, you know, the the gift card. Uh, but that's okay. You know, we get them in the classroom, and hopefully the, you know, the word will work on their hearts and, and uh, faith, and faith will grow. So, um, yeah, Wayne. I want to go back to what Al said. It reminds me that that also is a cause that the town will suffer if they don't have that. For example, there'll be more crime, more robberies, more trouble. It reminds me of what Bev's dad told me a story. There was a town years ago that banned, and that's because of what Al said, that banned dogs and cats until the skunks moved in. And then they revoked it. <laughs> and that, that's exactly when you have no Bible teaching, the crime shoots up. That's and that's what we're seeing in the USA. Well, is it even in, is it Vietnam where we built our Synod at Theological yeah. Training yeah. Center? where the government asked us to come in, right? A government that is not pro-Christian. And, and, and yeah, and they saw uh, the mission work that we did there, how that affected citizens of their country, that they were more upright and self-controlled and well-behaved and, and so forth. And, um, uh, and the yeah. building looks like a Taj Mahal. It's just a yeah. gorgeous center. Yeah, yeah, that's just, you can't make this up. Uh, the door that God opened for us. Um, so the point, I, if you kind of wrap this up, right? Um, so many people are living in darkness, right? So many people. And um, even just in general, you know, the importance of, of prayer, right? God's people praying for those who are lost and, um, you know, the supporting like the LWMS and, and their ministry. Um, of supporting home and world missionaries, you know, the importance in our lives of, of personal evangelism. Um, every chance that God gives us, we share the word, we, we plant the seed of the gospel, water it, pray that God makes it grow. Um, Joan, your hands. Well, we've got another opportunity and another place to be giving Bible lessons again. I know where Joan's going. Nursing home ministry. Nursing home. All righty. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And if if any of you are interested, it's going to be the best job you'll ever love. You'll 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 be happy to do it when you get started. And I'm perfectly willing to work with you to get you going. <laughs> All right. Open your eyes. Right. What did Jesus say? The fields are ripe for the harvest. Right. Both ends with those nearing the end of life. Uh, you think of the children at Key to Life, little ones, everyone in between. Wow. Call it job security as Christians, right? To serve a living Lord. All right, well, we'll stop right there, I guess. Um, I guess we didn't touch number six, but what's that about confidence as we follow God's will? Um, no, we are blessed, right? We have we, we have the gifts um, of the Holy Spirit. Joy, peace, hope, comfort. Um, everlasting life. Everlasting life, yeah. Okay, stop there. Any special prayer requests? Um, I have a prayer for um, Jim Becker's mother that was turned very ill and um, he used to come here to Bible yeah, class. Yeah, we know Jim. And she is getting better. She was septic. She's in her 90s. She went to Pride. So if we could just pray for, for Jim and his mother because Jim is, is very attached to her. Okay, yeah. Really we'll do that.
Yes, and with oh, L. L. I got a procedure on Friday. Hopefully, uh, Dr. Johnson will look favorably on this Johnson. So okay. Yeah. You could so yeah. <laughs> Pray for a good good checkup. You said on Friday. Tests. 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 Yeah. Okay. So all right. Let's pray. So dear Lord, we uh, we come to you uh, through your Son. Uh, Jesus Christ, and because of his uh, life and death, we have access to your heavenly throne. So we come as your children, uh, and we come uh, boldly and, and in faith. We first of all pray for, for Jim Becker, and, and that you would care for his mom, and that you would alleviate any, any fears or concerns that, that Jim might have, uh, as he knows that you're watching over his mother, and that through faith, um, she will live eternally in heaven. But again, be with Jim and his family, especially uh, put your uh, loving hand uh, upon his mother uh, with her health issues. Also pray for Al that he would have a, a good test uh, performed later on this week. And um, may the results be encouraging and uh, reassure Al and Gail um, of your abiding presence um, that all things work out for our eternal good, that we are so blessed to, to follow you, Jesus, as the light of the world, and as we follow you, uh, we are not in the dark, uh, but, but we have peace and hope and joy and the comfort of your powerful love, your abiding presence. All this we pray, dear Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. Can we sing? <clears throat> sure. What do we sing again? Is it doxology? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him. All